Well, welcome back to GIS Analysis at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. From last time, we created a test raster. First, we used the Create Fishnet tool to create squares, and then we used the Polygon to Raster tool to create our test raster. And we have no ability to do a attribute selection or a definition query with rasters. So one common way to do queries is to use the con tool. Before we use the con tool, we have to have spatial analyst extension checked on because this is part of the spatial analyst tools. So make sure your spatial analyst is checked on. And we're going to overwrite our output several times. So if you go to geoprocessing options, make sure that you have overwrite the output checked on. So we're going to use the CON tool, which stands for test a condition, which basically asks questions about the values inside the pixels. And the CON tool always creates a new output raster. So our input is the raster we're going to ask attribute questions about. And then we'll have whatever question we want to ask about. So let's do a question, is the value greater than 50? And if that's true, for all the pixels or all the cells where that's true, assign a value of 1 to those pixels. And for all those pixels or grid cells where the question is false, let's assign a value of 0. And then that will output to a raster, and the raster will contain values of 1 when the question is true, or 0 when the condition is false. So here is the output from the con tool, and if we look at the attribute table, there are 50 cells where the question was false. There are 50 cells where the question is true. So let's go back to our geoprocessing results, and we'll redo that question. And we'll have the same question, is the value greater than 50? And this time, we'll leave blank for false. So by leaving a blank for false, those cells become no data, so they won't even be considered. So now if we look at our attribute table, we have for a value of 1, those are all the cells where the question was true, and there's 50 of them. And we could change the color to any color we want. So everything in red is all the cells where the value is true and there's actually 50 cells where that value is true. So let's repeat the same question, except this time, if the value is true, let's keep the original pixel value. So we're asking a question about this raster. Here's the condition. If it's true, keep the original pixel values. If it's false, make those no data. So then that basically returns cells with values between 51 and 100. And we could go to symbology and assign them some unique values. So here are all the cells where the value is above 50. And we retain the original pixel value. So if we look at the attribute table, we have a count of 1 for all those cells that have a value above 50 in this raster. So let's remove our output. Let's create a second raster that's going to contain random values. So to do that, we'll use a tool create random raster. So we'll output to our test geo database random raster, and then the extent will be the same as our test raster. And then the cell size will be the same as our test raster, which in this case is 10. So here's our random raster, and it has values ranging from 0 is the lowest possible value to 1 is the highest possible value. 
If we look at the properties of random raster, under source, the pixel type is floating point. So basically every cell has a quantity. We can use the identify tool. What is the pixel value of this cell? So it's 0.8725. So if we look at our random raster, open attribute table has been disabled. And the reason why there is no raster attribute table is this is a floating point raster. Every cell has a different value. So it makes no sense to create a raster attribute table for a floating point raster because every cell has a different value. They're representing quantities rather than typically integer represents classes. So for example, this cell is 0.79, this cell is 0.385, this cell is 0.41. So let's try using the con tool with a floating point raster. So what we're going to do is we're going to test how many cells have a value greater than 0 0.5 and we'll put that in our output. So if that's true, we'll give it a value of 1. If it's false, we'll give it a value of no data. So we have to ask the question, is the value greater than 0.5? And if you click on the SQL, there's no query builder. And the reason why is there's no raster attribute table. So what we can do is we can type in our query. So is the value greater than 0.5? So I get an error because we can't output to that name with the decimal place. So let's just change that to 0, 0.5. So is the value greater than 0, 0.5? If it is, we'll assign those cells a value of 1. So here are all the cells where the value is above 0, 0.5. So how many are there? 45. So that's pretty close to 50% of the pixels having a value greater than 0.5. So let's check to make sure that this is correct. So what we could do is we could say, well, everything in yellow is going to be a zone. And what is the minimum and maximum cell value inside these yellow zones? So to do that, we'll use a tool, Zonal Statistics as Table. So zonal statistics as table will output a table and we can specify what we want in terms of descriptive statistics. So give us the minimum cell value and the maximum cell value and then we'll output our table to our test geo database. So I'll name my table check random values greater than 0 0.5. So the zone is our yellow cells which should all have values greater than 0 0.5 and then the raster we're going to check is our original random raster. So what it's going to do is look at all the yellow cells and within all those yellow cells what are the original random raster values and then extract the minimum value and the maximum value. So zonal statistics as table outputs a table and if we look at that table, we have a count of 45 cells, so that's all the cells that are yellow. The minimum was 0 0.503, so that checks out that everything in yellow has a cell value that's above 0 0.5.